Hello YouTube and welcome. In this video I'll be showing you how to detect masquerading techniques using Azure Sentinel. So grab your coffee or your whiskey because this one's going to get pretty damn juicy. It's meant to be a mask. Okay so before we dive in I actually want to talk about a security researcher and why I'm making this video. So a study shown in 2019, Picus Lab Security analysed over 56,000 types of malware to determine tactics and techniques and procedures. So Picus Labs categorised uh, each uh, observed TTP by utilising the MITRE ATT&CK framework. As a result of the present research, over 362,000 TTPs observed in the last year were mapped to the ATT&CK framework. Among those 362,000, Picus Labs categorised the most top 10 common techniques which were used by those attackers. Their research has found that masquerading was the fourth most prevalent attack technique used by adversaries uh, in their malware. As a defence invasion technique, adversaries change features of their malicious artefacts with legitimate and trusted ones. So this includes code signatures, names and location, names of tasks, services, etc. So once after masquerading, malicious artifacts of adversaries such as malware files may appear legitimate to users and, secu and security controls. So using the MITRE ATT&CK framework, there are multiple masquerading techniques. For this video, I'll be using the technique T1036.003, which is rename system utilities. So adversaries will frequently utilize system utilities and their operations to bypass and avoid name-based detections. So these utilities could be run DLL 32, uh, CMD, PowerShell, cert utility, etc. So for example, the threat actor operation soft cell changed the name of command prompt cmd.exe to cdm.exe. Now that simple character change is so minor that if you haven't got any detections set up this may go completely unnoticed. So in this video we're going to actually replicate that very same scenario Operation Soft Cell the threat actor used. So I'm in my test VM which is connected to our Sentinel instance. But before I run uh, the simulation, I have to point out that for our detections, uh, log source, I'll be using Sysmon. So if you haven't already, get Sysmon implemented. Uh, it's incredibly useful uh, for doing um, various detections, especially uh, this masquerading technique. So we're now in our test VM. I'm going to navigate to uh, the C drive and then Windows System 32. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you to, just to see if we can try and rename this. So let's rename this to one here. Okay, cool. That's fine. So this is the um, response which I'd uh, expect to be getting. So now I'm actually going to copy uh, CMD to another directory. So let me copy this and chuck it in at data local temp. So I'm going to paste it here and then I'm going to rename it to CDM. Okay, now I've renamed it CDM, I'm just going to launch it. And then let's just do a simple IP config to make sure it's working. Yep, happy days. Okay, now let me go into Event Viewer. So we're going to check out our Sysmon logs and see what's actually been captured. So if we go to Applications and Services. Then we'll go to Microsoft, and then we'll go to Windows, and we'll scroll all the way down to Sysmon. Let's click Operational. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just a simple find here and go CDM, that's me, CDM. Uh, let's just get the right log first, uh, and that'll be it. Okay, so we can see here that this is uh, the progress, uh, process create, it's event one. And we can see here that it's the Microsoft uh, operating system, obviously. Um, and the original file name is ipconfig. This original file name is ipconfig as well. Um, 
you can see the parent image we used here was CDM as well. So if we go on to the next one, and on to the next one, and this is the fella. So here we can see that uh, we have the Windows uh, command processor here. The original file name was actually CMD. The command line which was uh, used was uh, CDM, which was obviously launched, uh, which, which launched the processor. Um, uh, the user that did it as well. So this is what we're trying to capture here. The original file name, CDM, uh, CMD, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting that mixed up now. Um, so now that we've actually captured everything, um, this is going to be a good time to hop over to our Sentinel dashboard. Uh, firstly, make sure our Sysmon logs are being generated uh, and then actually start getting into the uh, detection rules. So I'll flick over to the Sentinel dashboard. OK, so once you're in the Sentinel dashboard, we're going to go down to settings and then there'll be workspace settings. This will actually take you into the um, log analytic workspace area. So if you go to agents management, oh no, agents configuration, sorry. And then here you can see that I've added the Microsoft dash Windows dash Sysmon uh, forward slash operational. So this is very important once you've um, installed Sysmon onto your various boxes um, uh, and an infrastructure which you want to log uh, that you actually do this. So now I'm going to go back into the, uh, the logs page within Azure Sentinel. And just going to trash that because that's a query. OK, so let's just move this out a little bit. OK, so the first thing is um, we know that our event source is going to be um, Sysmon. So we'll go where source uh, equals equals and then it's my oh my days. It's Microsoft dash Windows dash Sysmon. OK, if we just go for 30 minutes. Awesome. OK, so you can see we've got a lot of information here, uh, a hell of a lot indeed. Um, so this is going to make it um, there's parts in here which are, which we're really interested in, but it's kind of difficult to kind of search through this. Um, and get any form of uh, detection analysis. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to do some uh, Sysmon XML parsing here. So I'm going to uh, extend the rendered description equals, whoops, equals, and then to string. And then within the string, I'm going to split and then do rendered uh, description. And then I'm going to do a quick, comma and then a colon here um, and then I'm going to split this integer value zero out here and then hit that and nope sorry that should be like that and that should be like that so I'm just going to split these out so let me hit this okay awesome so now you can see we've got a new column called uh, rendered description and this has all the um, events for like process create uh, you know file created uh, etc so that's great so now we need to add some more additional uh, columns in here so we're going to go um, extend again and we're going to go event data and then we're going to pass this out uh, pass xml uh, and then within here, we're going to go event data again. And then I'm going to go uh, period data item and then event data again and then data. OK, let's hit this. Awesome. So you can see here now within event data here, we've got uh, a lot of separation, which is good. Um, so this is lovely. So now let's use the MV command. So we're going to go MV and then we're going to go bag expansion X ban Sean and then equals array. Um, so let's hit this. So whoops, I need to do it like that. And then I need to go event data. So the bag expansion equals array are property bags, which are expanded into two elements, key and value array structures. 
So this allows uh, uniform access to keys and values, uh, which we'll see in a moment when I'll come to no uh, add another line of syntax into the query. So um, now that we've got this, uh, I'm just going to, I can't remember the bloody command. Oh, it's uh, evaluate, uh, bag, and then it's unpack. Okay, within unpack, we're going to unpack the event data. So you can see where we're going with this, right? So the evaluate unbag, uh, unpack property unpacks a sing uh, single column of dynamic uh, of type of dynamic. So by treating each property bag top level slot as a column. So now that we've done this, uh, we're going to extend this. Uh, extend and then go key. And then equals and then to string. And then within the string, we need to add a square bracket and then at and then name. Uh, and then that and then square bracket. Oh, I cannot remember these characters. Save my life. Um, and then we're going to go val. Whoops, that's not what we wanted. We're going to go value. And then. I'm going to go equals, and then it will be this hash text, um, colon, that. Okay, I think that's the command. Okay, that's beautiful. So as you can see, if I just uh, hash this out real quick, so you can see we've got loads of stuff going on here, okay? So what I did um, with this is actually split um, the uh, uh, using the bag expansion property I actually splits it into the uh, the key and the values here, which is is very useful. So now we're going to um, evaluate pivot here. So if we go evaluate and then we're going to go uh, pivot and then within pivot we're going to go key any and then value. Uh, then I'm going to go time generated source event log, no, event log, and then I want to see computer event ID, rendered description, uh, and then type, and then for purpose sake resource ID. Okay, so the evaluate pivot uh, rotates a table by turning the unique values, uh, key and values, from uh, one column into multiple columns in the output table. So now we're starting to get a, uh, a lovely set of results now. Um, so uh, what's next in this query? Uh, okay, so we know that the where original file name original file name equals equals we know this is cmd okay so if we hit this awesome okay now we've got two results here this is brilliant okay so now we need to put in an exclusion process here uh for any process that's not being ran that's under the image directory which is uh system 32 so where image image does not ends with, um, how are we going to do this, cmd dot, oops, cmd dot exe, let's run this, perfect, okay, so that's extracted uh, the results, uh, sorry, that's given the exact results that I'm after, um, so we've passed our sysmon logs into a much more readable uh, and searchable format, we built our query up to show us the results on a CMD process, which was launched from not a trusted directory, System32. So if I just go into here, let's bring this up a little bit. Um, we can see here that the command line was used. Azure Admin, it was run from this directory, uh, this directory here, and this is the process. Um, and then if we scroll down a little bit, we can see the original file name is actually CMD. So this is great for... Uh, this query can be used for any kind of masquerading techniques. So for like PowerShell, C script, uh, W scripts, um, so util or any really any Windows uh, system utility. Um, and this this is a great great little uh, great little script here. Um, 
that the parcel that I found was actually on the Sentinel one, so I've just uh, written it out for, for you know, namesake here. Um, but for known process names, uh, consider alerting on acti activity where the process name does not match a list of other process names, um, which is what we've done in the query above, okay? So we've basically said here, search for our sysmon logs, look at the original file name of CMD, you know, command prompt, look at the directory, which it doesn't end in our normal directory, and then show me results. So for known process paths, consider alerting on activity where a process path does not match a list of process paths, which again is what we've done here. So based on CMD, you know, that lives in system 32 or sysfile 64. And that is how you detect masquerading techniques using Azure Sentinel. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, that's just fine. Please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your nan. Cheers.